All righty, my friends. We are back. And hey, we have a Freddy with us this time. How are you doing, my friends? I'm awake. You're I awake. totally I'm so did not oversleep this morning, and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> well, it's awesome to have you back, sir. Um, apparently, my camera's going crazy, so I got rainbow puke all over me. At least you're here clear, you know? Yeah, you're here as the uh, good orangey variation of Rand, and I'm here as the super white Mike Pincey version of myself. That's so right. You're Mike Pincey, like I, tr- I got the Trump look. It's perfect. Yeah, so, no, uh, we're a good duo. <laughs> uh, I neglected to remind everybody that this is a charity event, and so I do want to give a quick shout-out to the Eleonoran Foundation is the, uh, is the charity that we are... Uh, donating to for this event so if anybody does want to donate uh there is a link to exclamation point charity or exclamation exclamation point donation all the uh all the donations for this will be going to the children's hospital that over there in uh zurich switzerland the irie legacy has so generously set up for us and uh for our next run we have a new guest and i am super excited to welcome uh a man who is part of a mod that many people who have experienced ftl have probably experienced and probably cursed at some point. And that mod is Captain's Edition. And we have uh, Sleeper Service, a.k.a. Stefan Widney here. Uh, I'm, I apologize. Did I get your last name right? Is that right? Uh, Vidani, but it's fine. Vidani. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, my friend. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. I, uh, I love that you have one of the Captain's Edition, edition ships as uh, your picture here. Have you been... Uh, keeping up with Captain's Edition, working on that recently? <laughs> no, not at all, actually. It, it's been like <laughs> five years, I think, since I touched it. Uh, well, you have been working but, on new yeah. projects, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. I'm an independent game de- um, dev now, so I published one commercial release since then and um, worked on a couple of other games. Is it the uh, Hyperspace Dogfights? I think uh, yeah, exactly. was yeah. talking about that earlier. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that game? Uh, it's a jet combat roguelike, uh, kind of a mix between uh, Luft Trousers and uh, Risk of Rain, if that rings a bell for you. Oh, yeah. Risk of um, Rain's a great game. Yeah. So similar to that yeah. style. So you fly a, a jet. popular among and... FTL people, Risk of Rain, because it's kind of got that same randomness. Mm. It's also like a really nice classic roguelike of the like, early days, I guess, like kind of similar time than FTL now, nowadays. But well, yeah, so awesome. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what? Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying that's awesome. It's really cool that you've kind of transitioned from modder to game develop- developer. How how was how was making that jump for you? Uh, I mean, it's been five years now, and then I don't know. Like usually, that's the point where you get really depressed about it. So <laughs> I've been told, <laughs> and I guess I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm not particularly successful, I guess, but I'm still doing it, so I can't complain. <laughs> As a streamer on Twitch, I can understand not having success. So you know. <laughs> Sometimes you got to put in the grind before you start getting to where you want to be. But it, at least you're getting to do something that you love. Have you have you been working on some cool new uh, game projects lately that you can tell us anything about? Uh, right now I'm making a, a farming game uh, called Hyperspace Harvest. Um, and uh, yeah, it's got g- genetic engineering and you make your own crops and you make your own weapons. It takes place in, in space on a giant space mammal and you grow crops in its skin and then you go into its body and shoot whale cancel in the face uh that it's gonna be great really cool. if it's ever finished it's been a year now it's gonna take uh, at least another year i think sorry oh no no go ahead that's 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 great well it's, it's a cool idea the space theme sounds like it's something right in your wheelhouse yeah pretty much yeah i'm only making sci-fi games most of the times yeah. Well, it's awesome to have you, Stefan. We're going to talk with you more as we get into the run, but now I am going to introduce our uh, contestants here. Um, we have Pie Boy, who is well-known in many FTL streams as, like, modder extraordinaire and uh, kind of FTL knowledge guru. Uh, how are you doing, Pie Boy? I'm good, thank you very much. Are you ready to play this game today? Uh, how do you play FTL? You shoot things, right? <laughs> well, I assume you've been practicing. Have you been streaming much for practice? Uh, not a great deal, because what little chat I have when chat is active, I get so like distracted talking that I will lose like 20 minutes on a run. I'm like, oh, well, this isn't a competitive score. <laughs> as a, as a D- your <laughs> chat half the time. <laughs> as somebody who does D&D all the time, I, I'm not surprised you get distracted by chatting with your uh, <laughs> fellow players. <laughs> Uh, but your opponent today will be Crow Ravel, who uh, we got to chat with yesterday. So, Crow, are you there? Are you ready? How are you feeling, sir? 
Uh, yeah, no, I'm here. I'm feeling all, all right. You know, I mean, I get to play FTL. What more could you ask for? What have you been doing for practice to prepare for the tournament? Um, mostly just trying to get faster. I mean, like when I'm streaming, my runs are around three plus hours. So it was <laughs> trying to kind of figure out some hotkeys and try and speed up a little bit. Well, as long well, as you have a 10 to 12,000 score, uh, three hours should be fine. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, just play like retreat, retreat. I'm sure it'll be so just easy. Knock to... it out, man. You'll get mm -hmm. there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. Well, it's awesome to have you both here. And uh, we're going to jump into pick ban. And we have an interesting pick ban today because I chose NGA. <laughs> I believe um, Sleeper, you chose. NGB. Well, that that right? I think, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I chose the last one. <laughs> yeah, NGB the other, and then Freddy, uh, NG. you chose? NGC, of course. NGC, so <laughs> really big choices we have here. And I believe, Crow, you have the first ban. So what are you going to ban today? So I'm going to I'm gonna ban the one that I have the lowest win percentage on. So I'm banning the NGA. Which is mind-blowing, because I would just think NGB would be way worse. But OK, NGA is out. <laughs> Pie boy, what is your what is your ban, sir? I'm gonna be that. I'm not. I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I after hearing um, some inside information on crows talking about how he does better on B than A. Uh, B's out. All right. I was. I was. I was afraid. Maybe looking forward <clears throat> to the forever alone ship, but it's gonna be the NGC as your ship. So, if you all want to get on NGC, I'm going to grab. Another seed here that I'm going to get ready for you guys. As Kasalian gets us over to the other screen here, I'm going to put this in Discord. All right, there is your seed, and I'm going to read it out for you all and for chat if anybody wants to play along. The seed for NGC that they'll be playing on is 4983724. 4, all right, just it's a good thing check. I wasn't running this uh, run because I would have been the guy and we'd be running in <laughs> yeah. GB. I, I believe that about you, Freddie, that you would Oh, it totally. No, no. I said uh, while, in my stream while I was practicing, I planned on banning the good ships because I wanted to play the bad ones. <laughs> I actually enjoy the NGB. It's fun to play and I'm actually pretty good at it, but uh, I understand why they didn't want to do it. It is, you know, you can get unlucky with it, so... <laughs> well, this ship's got that OP hacking, so I'm looking for some high scores here. So, Crow Ravel, are you ready yeah. to go, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, All right. I'm ready. Good luck, Pie Boy. Good luck, Crow. Ready, Pie Boy? You're ready. I am ready. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Get it on. Get it on. It's very American. Get it on, sir. <laughs> I think that's yeah. in some show or something. I forget. Interesting Texas start to the sector here. Uh, <laughs> oh, wait, no. Is that that Japanese show where they're, get it on? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but Sleeper Surface, it's awesome to have you here, sir. How how have you been doing lately? Oh, good, good. I mean, quarantined, but other than that. <laughs> like most of the world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> learning, to, learning to have fun at your own house, I guess. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Have you been playing much FTL lately with all the tournament stuff and all that going on? I have not. No, I think I like the the uh, advanced edition beta was the last time I, I really played a lot, and after that, only occasionally. Yeah. Well, that's interesting since Captain's Edition is is pretty one of the more more popular kind of rework mods. Um, how did you get into creating something like that? Uh, I mean, I just wanted to to make some some cool ship guns and then it just got bigger and bigger and I don't know, it started out as a weapons mod basically and then I just kind of it grew in a modular fashion I worked on stations next and then uh, I did some uh, some sector stuff and that each leg took several months and then yeah it just grew and grew and I, I kind of extended the, the the original modules over time and added new modules and yeah and then it became pretty big like so <laughs> Yeah, and I know a lot of mods have kind of taken a lot of cues from what uh, what Captain's Edition has done. Um, Freddie, I, I did want to ask you about how you feel about NGC, because I feel like this is a pretty good starting out ship here. Yeah, I was going to talk a little bit about it. So NGC is ranked in the top couple of ships, probably. A lot mm -hmm. of people put it at number one, which I can understand and appreciate that argument. 
Uh, for me, it's probably either number two or three, but it's a very, okay. very strong ship. I did notice the runners, they went different directions, but okay. used the same strategy on their first fight, which was go ahead and hack the weapons. And you can see them both doing it here. Uh, it's it's a really strong strat. Hack those weapons, get them down, and hopefully punch it in, punch the weapons in with a uh, the dual laser and maybe start a fire or something and keep that missile okay. down. How do you like to uh, time your... I, I sometimes like to time my beam drone to turn it on kind of as my dual lasers are finishing their charge to try to kind of time that out. Do you try to time that or just kind of let it go? For sure, yeah. If you can if you can turn your beam drone on and off to shoot kind of when their shields are down, yeah, it's uh, very helpful. That. The, the beam drone's kind of weird. I mean, it, it can be useful. It's not that great. It can be useful. But what makes a lot of what makes a good ship is having a bunch of crap you can sell. <laughs> so <that's laughs> one, strangely enough. So this one, you know, you start with a defense scrambler, which you get forty dollars for. You can uh -huh. sell the beam drone. If you can you can you can run to your first store without taking one fight and buy a flak and you are just set nice. up for a while. Well I did want to ask you sleeper service with with all of your kind of game design knowledge and stuff was what what was the most challenging thing about creating something like Caps Edition? Was it creating new ships? Was it the kind of different you know, traits that you'd give the different races and stuff. I mean, what, what what's the hardest thing about creating a, a big mod like Captain's Edition? I mean, this was like the, the early days, so we knew very little about FTL at times. And mm -hmm. I guess the biggest part was figuring out what we can do without breaking the game and then getting to a point where we can put in new content and also test that reliably so we don't constantly crash people's experience. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. So it was a lot of trial and error, basically, where we just banged our heads against, uh, or at least me, uh, against the systems it has. Until How does one get into was... modding? Is it because you play the game and you want a different experience? Or is it because you like the original game and you just want to add to it? Or you're just more interested in how you can change a game up and tweak it to your own personal flavor? I mean, it all comes together, I guess. I, I really liked FTL. Like, I mean, it's a brilliant game, obviously. And yeah, I, I just wanted to to make a little change and, and add some little things, and then it kind of spiraled into it. Like, Yeah, yeah I wouldn't spiral out of control. I wouldn't yeah. say Captain's Edition is a little change. Yeah, spiraled out of control sounds about correct. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just kept doing it for years. But like, yeah, it really shows, I guess, nowadays. Pro but, is doing yeah. um, what I suggested there. He's selling the defense uh, scrambler Mm -hmm. purchase he, he's getting a weapon buffer he's got this whole laser two which i like the rich man <laughs> the expensive poor man's burst laser two there you go and there the you go, laser yeah. two it'll be a lot to get online but Ooh. um free rock man too. you'll notice pie boy is doing some o2 strats he is hacking o2 and killing o2 he's going for those crew kills so he that's is. a very different approach he's going to be really slow but hope he's getting lots of rewards for this I would say that is a ballsy move, and I hope it works out for him. And yeah, hopefully, it's bold move, Cotton. Yeah, it's it's bold. The um, it, it didn't take that long there, so maybe he's he's. I mean, Pie Boy is a good player. He'll be strategically using that probably when he thinks that uh, he can go ahead and get the quick kill without taking too long, and it worked out nicely there. Yeah, uh, I gotta say, Crow Ravel got I think another. Oh, he turned down this free crew. Okay. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of people turn down free crew because of uh, kind of lower scrap gains from taking that option. Um, I'm interested, uh, Sleeper, you know, Cat's Edition, I feel like, was one of the first big rework mods for FTL, right? Yeah, pretty much, I guess, too. Yeah. Uh, I feel like there's been a lot since then, like uh, Arsenal Plus is a big one, mm. uh, SMPK Insurrection that we talked with Slowrider about. N nowadays, Hyperspace and Multiverse have kind of become big. Did you know that you were going to kind of be an influence or do you interact with uh, other people who work on other mods to get insights on on kind of the creation of these things yeah pr i mean pretty much i think like especially slow uh, who was on before we kind of played off, off each other a lot i think like because he made mm -hmm. uh, basically like he rebalanced my mod and then i kind of took some of these changes into into my stuff mm -hmm. and uh also like uh captain's edition was always free to use for other models so all the assets are basically uh available for everyone who wants to use them or, or like remix them into their own experience so yeah that, that was... here, he's, he's inside the uh, garbage shield hack event uh that was he does have level two shields so not a big deal but that was one of the for the rules claire if you get that event early you can actually call for a restart but obviously he's safe here yeah looks like he recovered that well That's um, tough. can be 
It can be. He's Luckily, he has that extra shield, so it's not as devastating as it could be. Um, but that's really cool, Sleeper, that you've kind of gotten to interact with other modders like Slow Rider. Have you, have you worked with others of them on other projects at all? Hmm. Yeah, like the, the first thing, like when I formed the studio, we basically got together with, with Ran, who worked on the uh, flagship randomizer mod and the uh, um, uh, endless loot thing, which basically also randomizes uh, guns. So okay. we worked together and also um, uh, Tomas, who, who did the ship editor for FTL, like uh, Superluminal. Okay. Yeah, we also worked together later. For, for oh, Superluminal is yeah. really a cool tool mm -hmm. to be able to create your own ships. That's awesome. Well, with Vanilla FTL, uh, do you ever, with a format like this, have you ever tried to play uh, kind of this format that we're using where we're trying to get like high scores and fast time? Did you ever like do speed running or do any high score farming or anything like that? When no, I, I couldn't play? do this. Like, I mean, I think this is crazy what's going on here. Like the, the amount of like, uh, I don't know, optimization that's going on. <laughs> I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, it's cool to see the different players have these different strategies and really come up with what they think will be the best scoring. It's pretty cool. All right, it looks like they both have the, the same sun event here at yeah, the same solar time. Flame. Okay, so they're both in sector two. Um, I honestly thought Pie Boy was going to be further behind with that O2 crew kill, but it looks like he's not too far behind at all. Yeah, it which didn't is pretty cost nice. him. He calculated yeah. that correctly. All right, Crow's going, get rid of that beam drone. Get that dual laser online. I like it. Somewhere like along transition? the way, Pie Boy found a mantis, and then Crow found a rock. Both yeah. uh, pretty good crew members to pick up. Do you like to transition out of the offensive drones pretty quick, Freddy? Yeah, the drones are a waste of time. Generally, I mean, they're <laughs> they're. It's one of those things. It's like if you got it, you use it, and you might as well use it, like Pie Boy's doing here. But you're not excited about it. You're happy to swap <laughs> out to a real weapon like Crow did. It's no heavy laser one, right? No, or yeah, it's no heavy laser one or no, or yeah, poor man's rich like, man. Crow's is case, a whole laser. He hasn't, he's kind of sacrificed, which I think is great. Uh, hasn't gotten his shields up in order to get that weapon online. That should speed mm -hmm. him up nicely. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pie Boy's looking at the same store I think that Crow just looked at, but he doesn't have that whole laser that, yeah, he Crow should take that charge right. laser there. I think, mm -hmm. even I though think it's he's not eyeing really it. good. There he goes. Almost. Okay, good. There Woo! it is. Okay. And he can get it online. <laughs> he doesn't even need to sell his beam yet. Okay, he did. Oh, no, he does. Okay, yeah, he, he, did, he did the math there. That was a good transition for him. Well, Sleeper, I, I know that Captain Edition is kind of, it's kind of known as being, at, at least from my experience and from what I've heard from people, it's really even harder and more punishing than base vanilla FTL. And vanilla is FTL is already a really punishing thing. So was that, was that a, was that a uh, conscious goal to make it more difficult oh, from yeah. the beginning? Absolutely. Like, I mean, I mean, this was all before hard mode happened, basically. Uh, so, ah. Or well, most of it, most of it was developed before hard mode is uh, was a thing. So it's still okay. suggested that you play on on normal. Um, but uh, yeah, like the goal was kind of to yeah to to kind of reinforce this whole thing in FTL that that you kind of most of the time you're probably not gonna make it and kind of bring this back <laughs> for even experienced players. And, and give them like more systems to learn and way more stuff to to manage to yeah in order to be successful basically. Uh, and my Twitch take on chat. my talk on game development is is people who make games like FTL think I'm gonna make it you know this particular difficulty and the players are gonna win one in ten times and you know eventually it gets to streaking for ninety whatever yeah, times. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Look, it's and also. I think they always are surprised at how good people can get at their game, to be honest. Yeah, I also find this like a, a clear indicator for that the game is actually really like well designed that you can actually pull it off. Like that, that always makes it seem more fair in the end, in a way. Like you can technically do this, you, you just have to do some rigorous optimization or know the game really well. But like I really like this if it's not difficulty that that's actually insurmountable in some way. And that's what happens when groups or crowds can work on a problem together. It's like one person has small contributions at a time and and uh, basically feeds it to the group. And groups can become much smarter than any one individual. Well, and that's what's great about the 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 uh, modding community is you get you get so many people working on these different projects, and you get some kind of amazing creations because. Not only Captain Editions, I, Captain Edition, I don't think Multiverse, I don't think SMPK, I don't think a lot of those things would have existed without Captain Edition kind of, you know, 
paving the way to have some really cool new stuff that you added to FTL. Was that something you were proud of that you're able to kind of set up the, the, the path, pave the path for other mods to come out? I mean, I should like say that obviously I didn't do this alone at all. Like, I mean, there, there's many contributors who, who made like small contribution to to uh, to Captain's Edition, so maybe it's like ninety percent me. Uh, but yeah, that always was like kind of a collaborative thing in in some way. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it's cool that it developed this way, like, and that that the community flourished for this time. I don't know how it's going today, but I guess yeah, there, there's there's new life now with the hyperspace, so that might actually mm -hmm. open up some really interesting possibilities. Yeah, and that's 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 what's cool because things like hyperspace now exist. We have even more tools, so it's uh, it's kind of crazy to see a game that's this old. Was it nine years old or so now? Yeah, still having much, yeah. this active. Yeah, this active of a modding community, so it's super cool. Um, I should ask you more about your game that you're working on, though, because you're probably well. I, I would say excited, but it's probably a lot of work to kind of develop a game. Are you working on it on your own? Do you have a team? How's that working? So yeah, we, we started out of a team with, with Ran and uh, Tomas basically, and then uh, Ran went to uh, uh, Tomas went to uni, and Ran had a kid, so that kind of fell apart. Mm. So nowadays I'm, I'm mostly working uh, on my own. I have, I have like a sound team that I co collaborate with occasionally. But yeah, it's it's lots of work, lots of work. <laughs> I still I'm I'm also still updating Hyperspace Dogfights, so my my previous projects I, I put up some oh, okay. content updates are, for that. Are either of these on Steam that people can? Uh, can yeah, do? yeah. Yeah, hyperspace dogfights is on Steam. Okay, awesome. We'll definitely have to, I'll definitely have to give that a, a try because it's, if you play FTL, it sounds like it's probably a similar game with the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's not so roadway. technical. It's more like action oriented and like fast paced oh, okay. and. You know. I like your coloration today, Rand. You look like I a know. Football. Like I there's am... a there's a guy on YouTube. You know, YouTube you can find some weird, interesting topics. There's a guy I watch. He actually cuts opal gems. And... Oh really. Yeah, and like the different colors he gets out of them, kind of from this dull little rock to this fifteen thousand dollar opal. And, My head's probably uh, he just shaped the same. Opal, opal coloration. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Pie Boy just had a pretty good store. It looks like he didn't take anything. He's got his second shield. He does have a charge laser and a burst laser, which are, I would say, fairly similar in power. Two power, two shots. Um. Crowerville a little behind on defense. He hasn't got a second shield yet. Yeah, that's interesting. About. Maybe he just, he's kind of put his money into getting these weapons and stuff, which I like. I think he's making making the right move. It's just, uh, you know, you, the thing with the weapons is you, you can buy shields at any time, and you don't have to have a store with a good something or other to get shields. I mean, you can do that whenever. So take the weapons when you can. Very true. Actually, I, I've... Well, he's got a pike beam, so he's he's actually his weapon loadouts with that hacking is flagship ready. He does not yeah. need to find another weapon. I've noticed a lot of a lot of our competitors are going a more aggressive. I'm going to get weapons online for go defense and rely on either hacking or something else to keep them from taking too much damage. Kind of yeah, ride that line it out. It's definitely yeah. do you think out. Do you think there's going to be a run where where someone doesn't take hacking at all? <laughs> Man, I I you don't already I, have I, one. Nec Necro had an opportunity oh, to do okay. it last night, didn't do yeah. it. So uh -huh. I mean, it's happened, but um, I think that's the only one. I believe that's we've we've had a couple where somebody didn't get cloaking, but hacking has been pretty prolific. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. It makes sense because it's safety and it's yeah, also it's, it's, yeah, it's very safe. <laughs> help, helps your speed a lot of the time. Helps you get the fights done quicker. And when uh, you're Necro knows, Rebel, you don't need hacking. <laughs> Only if you're Necro Rebel, though. He had a really good run, though. Yeah, he had pretty good. He had a pretty good loadout. Yeah. So, uh, Sleeper, what is your favorite thing that you created for Captain's Edition? Was it like a weapon? Was it a ship? Was it an event? What 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 are you most proud of in your kind of creation oh, of Captain's Edition? I don't know. I really like the, the Federation sector because it's kind of like a preview on the last stand and it has some interesting atmosphere i think like it really reinforces the whole like well, the, the rebels are kind of crushing it and uh, kind of illustrates more this this whole conflict between the, the federation and the rebels and it has some interesting events and quests and i think yeah but yeah i mean there's there's lots there's lots of stuff in the mod so i don't know <laughs> yeah that's true you you captain dish is pretty pretty prolific i would say <laughs> Well, were you able to catch the? Uh, we were able to talk with Tom Joubert, the writer for FTL yesterday. Were you able to catch any of that? Oh yeah, I missed that. I have to, to catch back up on that. Yeah. Well, you what you mentioned, 
the interview with Tom was really, really great. I thought he was a really interesting yeah. cat. Well, and what what you said about kind of telling more of the story about the Federation kind of reminded me of Tom talking about you. You kind of can storytell with your game design a lot of the time. So, kind of what you did there of you know trying to get more story of the backstory of Federation and and Rebels with your Federation uh, uh, you know sector is similar to kind of what he does with storytelling in his video games. Yeah. I think like, I don't know, I always like this about FDL too, that it's like, I mean, it has a lot of space to do stories, but also the writing is, is very good in that it's pretty condensed. Like mm -hmm. the, the the events are there, but they don't get too much in the foreground. And, and they, they tell like a lot of story with like a single paragraph. And lots of times I think that's that's like a really great quality about the game. I tried to kind of, I found this really hard to do this in, in, in custom events as well. Like it's tempting to just make long events, like, but to, to describe things, but like getting it really down condensed, I, I found this pretty hard. Pie, pie boy here, uh, he found a, another burst, la another laser, two power laser, burst laser one. Mm -hmm. He's got a pretty nice loadout here, um, playing really well. I like and the I way turned I like from what an I'm opal into, these a, into a ghost. There we go. All right, yeah. Uh, what you say, sleeper, is Tom talked about that. I, the kind of keeping keeping the storytelling as condensed as possible. I think is. A really cool thing you bring up because that's that's one of the reasons I love FTL. Uh, Subnautica was another game he worked on. You you tell hmm. story, but you don't throw it in the face of the player. You let them experience it at their, at their own pace. Yeah, it seems like a hard thing to do in game development. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah Subnautica does also. Yeah, this is great. Like, in, I mean, even more env environmentally. I mean, I guess FTL. I mean, it has text to just tell you things. So I, it can also make like a bigger world from that. But if you can just do it with, with environment, it's also. It's pretty cool. My problem is you got to be able to read. And uh, people, in, <laughs> people in chat will be like, Freddie, why didn't you click this or that? I'm like, I don't read. <laughs> Reading's hard, okay? You have Just to go to click school. the number I want. I don't read it. <laughs> the only word I know how to read is when you find that slug sitting there with the number of moons. It'll steal all your stuff if you don't tell him how many moons. <laughs> he already knows how many moons he has. Why is he asking me? But uh, that's the only one I read. Uh, I feel like I think they're both pretty close. I think they both got that free mantis in the asteroid field, so they're pretty darn close right now uh, in progress in this run. Very close in progress and very similar in builds as well. They just happen to go a little bit different directions in sector one, but uh, both capable ships here. Probably looking to improve. Pie Boy may be looking for a beam or something later, or maybe grow as well, but uh, both are moving along just fine. Mm hmm. Looking good. Crow Ravel kind of doing what you talked about, Freddie, kind of over repairing a little bit to deal with things like the double missile ship he just fought. Yeah, he's got the exact uh, place I like to repair up to, which is just seven short of full. All right. He's going to a store, I believe. Backup battery. All right. He's got some stuff to sell. Do you hold oh, on to the distraction, distraction boys? boys? Don't sell that. That's great for a score. Yeah, that's some extra, extra jumps, I think, right? I'm not sure when that happened, but that's a good pickup. Yeah, I don't know if he picked that up or if he got it for free, but that is really nice for. Oh, uh, I think he jumps. did get it for free. There was a fight where it popped up. You guys were, okay. I was gonna, yeah, you guys were talking, but uh, I didn't want to interject. But he did, he did get that for free in a fight okay. early this sector, I think. Okay. And uh, I do want to remind folks in chat that if you do want to find out more about sleeper services work and stuff, check check the uh, the guest list exclamation point guest list command. We'll show up and we'll give you a bunch of links to things that Sleeper's working on and Captain Edition, all that kind of stuff. And you can, uh, is there a place where people can find you, Sleeper Service? Any like forums you hang out or discords or anything like that? Oh, you can find me on, on Twitter at sleeper underscore games, I guess, if you want to contact me or anything. Awesome. Awesome. And there's a, there's like a secret discord, but you only get invited if you, if you play my <laughs> games, actually. <laughs> a secret discord. I like the sound of that. <laughs> all right. So Pi making some upgrades. That looks like weapon upgrades. So he's going to go with some more, get some more pew pew for his ship. Yeah, he's got a uh, six shot volley, sector three with hacking. It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm I'm probably looking for a defense drone soon here because my offense is feeling pretty good after that. Oh, and he's got the little gumball machine. That's what we call it. The, uh, <laughs> the whole repair? The system. Yeah, the system repair bot. We call it the gumball oh. machine. He's, he's very Oh, you cute. call that the gumball? Okay. Yeah, yeah, because uh, maybe he just looks like a little gumball machine on wheels. I don't know. <laughs> gumball machine on wheels. Okay. 
I, I can dig it. That's that's the first time I've heard the uh, system repair truck called the gumball machine. That's funny. But on on uh, three drone ships, on the NG ships, he's great because you have enough slots if you find like a hull repair and defense drone. If you find a hull repair drone, a defense drone Mark One, and the gumball machine, you are good on drones, and that's a very strong combo. Nice. Uh, Sleeper, did you ever do any like um, kind of visual design or are you more of a programming side of things you have to do a lot of art and stuff when you do your your game design yeah i do i do everything pretty much i mean uh, lots of pixel art mostly well you did like um for caps edition there's a lot of like extra drones so did you like do design for visual design for the drones and that kind of stuff yeah 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 almost yeah the drones are all by me i think uh the weapons too and some ships most of the ships i think the, the, the stations as well so. Yeah, one of the cool things I love to see in a lot of these FTO mods is uh, cool um, kind of weapon design. See the animations that people come up with. There, there's some really cool stuff out, mm. out in the FTO community with that. There's that missile and the weapons. One of my favorite things Crowervel just got to experience, missile and the weapons. Anytime you eat a missile, it's, it's just good luck, you know? You're, uh, <laughs> so, luck. you're getting your bad luck out of the way for future good luck. So he ate the weapons missile, and then he dodged the next one because he had that good luck. Oh, we got to see some cheeky swipes. Crovell, let's see it. Cheeky it up, boy. They both there have the gumball go. machine, too. Mm-hmm. I wonder... One, I, I, the funny thing is, I like the gumball machine. I wonder if they'll be keeping it. I, I hope they do, because it's not... You only sell it for 15. It's like having uh -huh. an NG running around fixing stuff. It's true. I guess my only thing is the power, but as long as you get that one extra power in... Uh, either a backup battery or just have the extra system power. It Actually, they both nice have the battery the already. So. Yeah. It can be quite good for the boss fight when you're having to deal with borders, but have them kind of repairing your stuff from the random missile hits. And in my practice, I found it to be pretty good because uh, a lot of times you're not taking the free crew because you need the ship kill uh, based on the scoring system. And so you're foregoing free crew, whereas normally maybe you would tank them. So sometimes you get to the flagship and you're a little bit light on crew. So it's nice to have that repair bot as sort of a proxy for an NG. All right, another free NG. Oh, Pie Boy turning down the free NG. Every yeah, time I see it. That's right. So he, he yeah. wants to get the ship kill instead of the free yeah. crew there. It's, and that's that's what happens over and over again. So that's how yeah. you end up light. Well, and one of the great things about NG ships is starting with NGs is just so good because you have them. You don't have to recruit them to get your blue options. Yeah, you could even accidentally kill one and you still have one because you get two. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will sacrifice humans to the great venting gods. I don't know about NGs, though. No, I'm not saying it's intentional. Just, you know, these accidents, these these things happen well sleeper i do have another question that uh Kassalian have brought up with me is do do you have any uh you know plans for any comebacks or overhauls of captain's edition with things like hyperspace being available what, what are your plans for any future stuff like that uh i don't know like not really i guess i could update uh ce so it isn't completely broken i mean it isn't broken completely but like there's, there's this thing with the title screen and stuff like that it's kind uh -huh. of messed up since since the latest patches i guess maybe i'll do this in some level but at some point but uh i don't know like i, I got a lot, a lot on my plate mostly so oh i'm, I'm sure with mm. developing your own games that uh is probably huge amount of time mm. commitments and work for that i mean and also i mean yeah ftl modding was nice but nowadays i can just yeah i don't know you can be more creative if you have Full control over the game, basically. So it's yeah, kind of hard to sense. go back to that. Yeah. Did you get? Did you learn a lot of skills from uh, modding in FTL? Oh yeah, definitely. Use? I mean, the the whole like I don't know, getting a, an idea of how the game is structured, basically. Yeah, that, that informed my whole whole view on, on on developing games and stuff. But also like for art and stuff, I got started with pixel art doing doing FTL stuff, basically. Well, that's super cool. Uh, we're in sector four for Crow. Is Pie Boy in still similar position, Freddie? Have you seen? I, I I missed what sector he's in. Yeah, I, yeah, they're very similar in terms of um, pace of play at the moment. Mm -hmm. I believe uh, did did Crow go to NG? Because most people have been avoiding NGs, I guess, because there's not a lot of fights in NGs, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I didn't happen to notice that detail. When he jumps, it'll say in the lower left here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah Pie, Pie Boy, Boy Civilian. Uh, I think they're both in Civilian. I, I think, think they have right. the same layout. I think you're right. I think it is Civilian. Which is reloader. apparently one See of the better buys a reloader. He's got the money. Oh. Says no. What did he he bought something besides a reloader? What did he get? Scanners, long range scanners. Ah, oh, I got scanners. Okay, that's a big pickup. Yeah, that's a nice pickup. Doing the hacking trick, pie boy, getting the uh, sneaking that drone through three different drones. Nicely done. All right, neither have gotten a defense drone. I, what is your what is your idea on systems to pick up for this ship, uh, Freddie? Because I like cloaking, but. Unless you get some good crew, boarding could be bad if you don't get mind control. What's your choice? Nah, you got the clone bay. So the clone bay is a good... Um, if you don't have mind control, the clone bay is a great alternate option. Because you don't... Just the odds of losing crew is, is greatly diminished. Especially if you get a backup DNA bank. I mean, you're completely safe. So definitely cloaking with this ship. Okay. Sleeper, if you had to do a, do a run like this... What, what what ships would you like to play? Are there any ships that you think you'd have more success on? Hmm. I don't know. I guess I I would go with some boarding oriented stuff. Like, but I feel I feel sometimes I feel this is like the safest thing. But I, I generally I play too uh, defensively, so I, I don't know. Like, would be have we had of, a, we haven't had a boarding run yet, have we? Not a pure boarding run. No, mm -hmm. I, we've only had some crew killing. I think. So like in terms of a boarding, like a boarding ship, I, ship? That, no. I think Lanny is B because I want. I was hoping it'd get picked. I do <laughs> want to see a boarding run to mix it up a little bit. Maybe we can uh, start throwing in some boarding ships. Yeah, in the I next think round. I think our next three <laughs> ships are going to be boarding, boarding, boarding. Mantis A, Mantis one. B, Mantis C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that would be cool. <laughs> uh, and they're well, both yeah, so stable. Of... Like I, I kind of hope that that someone would just ban. NGC to to like screw with the other, but <laughs> no, uh, like both I said, that's the what I would have done. Everyone thinks I'm a jerk anyway, so I mean, why not? I'm pretty sure Pie Boy was thinking about it. He was thinking about banning out the C and going for B. <laughs> yeah, if you if you think you can put your opponent in a tough spot, then ban the good ship, right? And then um, yeah. play, make them play the bad ship. No. All right. Well, uh, crew-wise, they're wow. These runs are so similar. I, like the only difference is, Crow's got a rock instead of an extra NG. Uh, their weapons are looking so similar. Um, I honestly don't think anybody's ahead. This is really close. We've had a lot of really close mm -hmm. matches. Yeah, this is a really good match. I don't um, think another... Crow's going to take three hours, so that's good news for him. <laughs> He's been practicing to not take three hours. I'm glad <laughs> to hear that. Keep it under three. <laughs> uh, he does. Now, pretty... Crow, it, Crow is doing the... Okay, no, he does have two engines. I thought he had the one engine routine going. I was going to get... I don't have to rage out so early in the morning. That's good news. You can rage, but not as much, because it's yeah. two instead of one. <laughs> you can rage about something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Sleeper, since uh, we had talked about... Uh, we had such a cool talk with Tom Joubert yesterday about kind of the, the riding side of uh, of games. How how much have you been doing in the riding side of your games? Do you do you do a lot of riding or do you keep that minimal? You said you try to do it, but it's a, a difficult thing. How how do you try to balance that? Uh, I mean, so far, and I, I did most of like storytelling through item descriptions and stuff. So it's kind of in the background in hyperspace dogfights because it's so action oriented, and I didn't want mm -hmm. to like have this like compete with the action basically and now I'm, I'm going a little bit more into the direction of like yeah i have national characters characters and stuff like that and, and more of a narrative in the center of with the the current thing hyperspace harvest uh but yeah i mean it's yeah it's tough i always feel like i need to like learn more individual like skills like i need to take some kind of writing class or, or read up more on this topic because like it's like if you yeah there, there's so much that goes into development like so so many individual things that, that I don't know, you never feel like competent in any of them i feel like uh, or really competent so it's kind of yeah i try to balance it out well well that's a good question like what what was your schooling like did you like learn programming oh, in school if you wanted to go into gaming or what's your anything. background I'm, for that i would be in arabic studies arabic uh, arabic yeah. studies okay yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so far, so far, I haven't used that much for game development. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, it's all, it's all self-taught basically. 
Yeah, it's like my brother. He's got a he's got a degree in vocal performance, and he works for insurance. You know, sometimes you do something different <laughs> than what you went to school for. When he gets a customer, he can send him a <laughs> send him a song card. That's right, sing him a recording. song. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas from your insurance provider. There you go, Freddie. You can help him write the songs. Yeah, <laughs> and Sleeper with his training can like write in Sanskrit for uh, his games. I don't know. <laughs> I, that shows my uh, uh, ignorance of what even Arabic studies would even be about. I'm sorry. <laughs> Arabic mostly. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Pie Boy is at full health. I don't know if he got a free repair if he actually repaired all the way up to full. I'm not sure. I'm yeah, gonna guess I that was a free repair. For that. No. Ooh, well, that's a good deal. <laughs> I wonder if he'll take it. Yeah, well, that's no. Yeah, you yeah. need the points. Ooh, that's tough to turn down because that's what 60 scrap ish deal something like that yeah real tough but um based on the format of the, the run it's probably the right choice yeah i like to see crow Ravel. you start seeing his head bopping sometimes i don't know if he's thinking through something or if he's like just coasting look at pie boy doing the same thing he's just head bopping yeah i think i saw crow doing it earlier when something good was happening so i think he's just emotive when something nice happens <laughs> It's nice when we get competitors who are also streamers because, you know, they're used to probably chatting while they play. So I'm wondering if it's challenging to focus and not keep looking for chat to see see what people are well, saying. Far Farb's focus was almost like creepy. Creep, you know, he's just like, you know, he's very, very intense in his focus. And then as soon as this runs over, he's, you know, relaxes a little bit. But he's got that focused face. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Farb was laser focused. And his runs have been really good. Don't right, want to mess with a guy with a beard like that, you know? <laughs> Nothing good ever comes mm. out of it. Scrap recovery. Would, would you take this now? I don't think you do, right, mm. Freddie, for score, since it doesn't uh, add to your final score? Doesn't. No, it doesn't help with your score. And, um, nah, I'd probably just give the kill. If they're, if they're, oh. if they're offering it up for free, I just, I just go ahead and blow them up. It's, it's it's interesting when a format like this, a lot of things you don't that you might take in a regular run or a scoring run or a farming run that you wouldn't take. Yeah, there's that same. See, Crow deal got the exact same them. deal, and he said no as well with the swarm, mm -hmm. the free swarm missile deal on the sun. So hmm. they 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 run into similar strategy here. Pybiok is floating two fifty. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking he's looking for cloaking right now. It's probably mm -hmm. probably what he's going for. Yeah. Cloaking he and hacking. Cloaking. I would like to see him spend a little bit. Maybe at least get a shield buffer. Maybe look for a defense drone. Mm-hmm. Uh, his his weapons, both players' weapons are looking pretty darn good. Crowvel does not have his pipe beam powered. Pie boy taking NG over Mantis, I think was his other option. Okay. Yeah, he's got oh. so much money as stores looking pretty juicy. Yeah. Okay, he does get his shields up. Yeah, I didn't see an immediate store, so getting the shields pretty good. Pretty good expenditure there, sector five. Yeah, he wants to keep 150 bucks to get the um, cloaking. Giant alien spiders. They're no Giant joke. alien, no problem when you got the clone bay. <laughs> uh, There's a great scene in Kestrel Adventure. I know you haven't seen it yet, Rand, but uh, not yet. There's a great scene. It's it's sort of you know you have an idea a little bit about the giant alien spiders from playing FTL, but what Casual Adventure does is it kind of expands on the universe in it just a fantastic way. And there's a, there's a great episode where they're boarding the ship against giant alien spiders. <laughs> so you get to actually see the you spiders. You get to see the giant alien spiders. <laughs> Are they terrifying, as terrifying as we expect? Oh, they're they're ferocious, man. <laughs> uh, they're no joke, as Necrobo likes to say. Giant alien spiders, they're no joke. They're no joke. Uh well, Sleeper, if you were still uh, adding stuff to Cast Edition, is there any stuff that you'd go back and do with, you know, kind of your experience in other game design, other projects you'd, or uh, maybe events or crew or anything you'd, you'd want to add into it? Uh, I don't know if I would add anything. I, I guess I would kind of rebalance it. As there's probably stuff that I wouldn't do as, as harshly <laughs> anymore these days. <laughs> I don't know exactly, like, yeah, you know, when that would change, but, like, there's a few things that are. I think kind of out of line with what FTL normally does. Like I, I took care to not do this too much, but there's like this is what there's this one traitor event. I think that's that's uh, maligned globally. Like I don't know, 
because it takes away crew with, with very few options to get out of it and mm -hmm. or they're very obtuse you basically yeah you can avoid it by not going to certain sectors but other than that it's kind of hard to find blue counters to it but I, yeah, I've had like crew is too plentiful in this game and it's too easy to get crew. So there's a few things that kind of counteract this, but. Well, I will say I definitely did plenty of raging when I played Captain Edition. So I probably <laughs> yeah, yeah, would you're not appreciate, alone. <laughs> I'm not alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's kind of hard like, to, to keep this up. Like I'm, I'm never really sure about this either. Like, I mean, I don't think it would be more appealing if it would be softer, I think like it's kind of playing into what what the game is normally like already do doing so i don't know but it's, well, yeah, it's tough to, to find the balance there yeah and there's a lot of players who probably have played captions a lot who, who like that extra challenge who like more punishment more kind of because if they overcome it then it's even a bigger yeah. accomplishment even yeah exactly then. yeah i would assume that yeah that, that was also the goal like yeah, it gives you more to overcome and ultimately yeah just like normal ftr it feels good mm -hmm. once you actually do it but but so I mean, yeah, there's a case to be made whether this is really like uh, the, the best game design stuff that you can do because it's kind of it's kind of cheap to make things uh, hard or kind of easy in a way. Like uh, it might be it, it can be way harder to make a game engaging and I don't know that's also easier that that's just focused on a narrative. Sometimes I feel like uh, it's like a I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to hard to think hard to say what's what's really like I don't know. The, the best thing well i guess it also doesn't just work for everyone like it's just mm -hmm. yeah it's a specific thing so reminder we do have a new command if you want to see the trailer or the short clip videos oh, we yeah. showed of kestrel adventure it's exclam kestrel and chat yeah, and then also kestrel. too you can go to youtube just do a youtube search for kestrel adventures and you can find the whole series definitely worth a watch if you like fdl I'll put that command right there. Yes, thank you for that reminder. And if you like, if you don't like FTL, I don't know what you're doing here. So everyone <laughs> in chat should go. It's the wrong that. channel, so, wrong yeah. channel. If you don't like FTL, <laughs> yeah. If you don't like FTL, man, send me a private message. You need some help. <laughs> and Freddie will beat you up or be mean to you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> direct you to some help, mental health services. <laughs> By the way, so actually, both are banking some pretty big scrap. Crow Ravel, I noticed, he's doing a little bit of diving here. He took a couple extra jumps. Trying to dive. I think he's trying to get that a little bit of score farming going here. He's trying to do some cheeky swipes, but decided not to. Yeah. I don't think a cheeky swipe uh, with his current setup actually speeds that fight up. Um, yeah. I mean, it's you have to usually, oh, that's engines going down in, a, oh, in an ASB dive. Uh -oh. Hopefully a system repair drone is going to help here come in clutch, I'm hoping. Yeah, he's got that little repair repair bot. It's good. Honestly, taking a dive with two engines, two shields, that's that's really brave. Two engines is a little scary, yeah. I yeah. It's good he blew the ship up. He'll be able to get out more quickly. Your FTL charges when there's no ship. Yeah. I was a little worried about him taking too much damage right there. Oh uh, yeah, uh Kassalin's actually reminded me of a cool system in uh Caps Edition about the whole like you added kind of a, a little bit of a morality thing where slugs don't mind piracy and some player and some uh, some races don't want you to kill other things. Was that was that something that you added? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of a, a big thing to to distinguish the ships more because it's yeah based on the the uh, ship arguments that they come with. So mm -hmm. certain ships can just uh, negotiate better surrender and on every surrender. Uh, that you get and stuff like that and it's just worth as much as as killing a ship for example and stuff like that yeah that was something yeah that i yeah it's a part i, I like quite much because it's uh distinguishing the ships nicely mm -hmm. and there's also yeah there's this whole like uh, uh fake morality thing where it kind of uh implies that your crew gets madder the more piracy right. you do on, on on certain ships like that that don't allow this basically or that, that don't yeah support this uh but it's yeah with, with hyperspace you could actually do this now in a proper way like your, your crew get could get matter i think that is like a, a way to store this kind of value and states but I, I i didn't do this this wasn't possible so it's basically just a random yeah. chance <laughs> pie boy pie boy just picked up cloaking so his ship's looking very nice there and we go. just got a nice reaction shot from pie boy he was fighting a ship that had cloaking and uh it gets me a lot too it kind of it fools you into thinking you can shoot twice, but you got to wait for that mm. second cloaking cycle 
Otherwise, you're just going to shoot and whiff. And he did mm-hmm. it. He, he went, oh, like, I can't believe I <laughs> fell for it. I've fallen for it so many times. It makes me yeah. feel better. It's hard not to sometimes, though. Yeah, it's hard to be patient for that second volley, for sure. <laughs> it is. But he's got cloaking himself and uh, three shields, four engines. Mm-hmm. His ship's basically done. If he can just find maybe a halberd beam or something, he's looking super yeah. strong. Yeah, a little light on the shots, but get a halberd beam or a flak or a burst laser, too. He's looking pretty darn strong. Uh, Crow Ravel, whole laser, too, is actually... Even though it's slightly slow, I honestly think I like his weapons slightly better. That plus hacking plus the pike beam, I feel like he's got a little bit more DPS going on with his with his weapons. Uh, a little lighter on the defense for him though. Uh, he's still he's still only going two shields, four engines. No, I don't know if he's been looking for cloaking. He's been banking some scrap though. Probably only a matter of time. I think he wants to save that 150 bucks. So when he for when he finds cloaking. Pie boy has a halberd beam in his. He just gave the thumbs up. I think it's he must have just got a halberd beam. Wow. Uh, He's a uh, yeah. Ooh, free and nice. I'm starting to feel Pie boy is um with his cloaking halberd beam. Mm-hmm. Even though he had the weaker weapons for a while. He might start running away with this. Yeah. If he starts getting that stuff online. So Especially the clock. Kind of, kind of feel the clock ticking just a little bit here. Mm-hmm. Well, Sleeper, which of those uh, races with that special thing did you like the most? I think mine was still probably Mantis because you could get crew kills with them. But did you have a favorite like the Slugs not mining piracy or one of the other? Did you have a favorite of your kind of yeah, the implied piracy thing morality? Was, well, yeah, it was pretty common. Like uh, almost all the, the more aggressive races get that or the factions get that. I, I think I really like the Zoltan stuff because it uh, basically opens up this new path where you can just... Uh, well, you don't have to kill people anymore, but you can actually get a, a good offer on, on the surrender. So it kind of really plays into their supposed uh, characteristics. And it also, there's a secret ending associated with that. Mm-hmm. It's also kind of... Uh, yeah, like, the well, resultant peaceful ending. It yeah. <laughs> yeah. I kind of liked it. But That's yeah, cool. yeah. There's a that secret I... ending in Captain's Edition for a Zoltan, mm. peaceful Zoltan ending. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's I, I kind of that that was one of probably my favorite parts of Captain's Edition, little Easter eggs like that, because I feel like that's something that would be make sense in the original FTL is, yeah, you know, I, I some people who really contest this that this is kind of stupid. I, I think it's it's a pretty campy, like uh, the, the the rebels just uh, <laughs> see reason because you can yeah <laughs> yeah you intimidate him so hard with your ship and you have such a uh, cool crew that they basically say yeah okay we're beaten, <laughs> but I well, mean I yeah. Uh, it's a nice it's thing. It's pretty difficult to do because you have to yeah, have really hard crew. To you have yeah. to have, I think, Zoltan shield. There's like a lot of pieces to it. But if yeah, you do yeah. it, you can get that ending. It's really cool. And again, it kind of grinds against what, what FTL can actually do. So it can't really end the game because there's no, like, I can't just end the game in a function in, or in, in an event. But uh, it just tells you that you technically have won and stuff like that. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it might still kill the, the flagship or something like that. I think it, it does like something like that or something. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't remember. <laughs> Crow Ravel, pretty tough little fight here in a, in a Pulsar. He's pausing a lot to give Smooth himself as much chance to dodge at least they don't have a beam drone or something yeah that's very good thing pie boy i'm thinking he needs to get this halberd beam online is that what he's doing right now yeah yeah there's nothing stopping uh pie boy at the moment Mm -hmm. pie boy definitely looking stronger right now uh sector wise i think pie boy might be a little bit ahead sector six slug he's about a third of the way through this sector crow i missed where he is i think he's a little bit behind right now yeah, he's not quite as far ahead. I said I liked his DPS, but I don't know. his. Uh, he's kind of running low on drone parts right now, and he's a little reliant on it hacking. And his hull is uh, looking a little skeezy. <laughs> poor man's rich man, old uh, junker just, car he's working It's just a right poor now. man hull right there. <laughs> 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 there ain't no, no rich man about it. <laughs> Uh, there's that there's that slug glaive beam ship which is honestly not that scary because often it's so so long before the charge comes through that you can often get it offline before before it actually gets gets to do its damage crow getting third shield i really like that okay all right 
Yeah, Crow needs to find a store just to just to give a little bit of safety right now. That's that's he's riding the line. He's about a sector behind. He's sector five. He's about a sector behind. Why with another store here? Just needs upgrades. I feel like Pie Boy's just about done. Maybe get a defense drone, but he's looking really strong. Yeah, I think with the cloaking, it's here or there. He did sell his gumball machine, which I'm not surprised by. Probably the correct play, but I just have a soft spot for that thing. <laughs> Freddie, earlier you said if somebody doesn't like FTL, you're you're you you have some words with them. Well, my friend Shogi just said, I'm watching the stream right now, and he can have words with me. Tell him to wrap his head around that. <laughs> he doesn't like Ooh. FTL. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, fight me, IRL. Fight me. <laughs> uh, there's a streamer, uh, Cobalt Streak, who says, Fight me at PAX. Come to PAX yeah, and I'll I, fight you. I've heard him say that a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he's probably a big baby IRL though. It's, 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 easy, to be, it's easy to be tough on the internet, you know? <laughs> yeah, when you don't have to see anybody in real life, it's a lot easier to to talk smack, right? Yeah, totally. Sleeper, did you get a lot for Captain Edition? Did people get mad at you for how difficult your your mod is? They like talk smack to you on your uh, on subset <laughs> forums or something? No, it was it was very simple. Well, <laughs> but people, <laughs> yeah, people have opinions, strong opinions, uh, and. <laughs> I guess I have two in some way because sometimes I don't know. Like I feel like there was a lot of uh, like feedback that I also incorporated. I mean, the the change log for for Captain's editions is like pages long, and it was mostly stuff that people suggested or pointed out. But yeah, I mean, as I said, it's kind of hard to to find this this balance between. Uh, well, I want this to be hard, but I also don't want to want it to be like impossible. Um, yeah, I don't want it to be impossible or feel completely mm -hmm. unfair and unjustified. Uh, Wow, Crow's doing another couple of dives here. He is he's really trying to maximize that score. I think he only gets one extra jump from this dive. I wonder if he's feeling like uh Pressure. he's not having this fastest run, so he's thinking maybe he wants to get the score up. That, honestly, it might pay off because he is about a sector behind, so he might need that to have a competitive chance here. Yeah, I mean it's it could work for him. And sleeper, did you did Although I don't think Pie Boy is struggling in score, though, no. based on the strength of his yeah, ship. Yeah, he's, he's doing his. He's looking really strong. He's got a lot of upgrades, and he's still, I think, got a sector to go. I think. Um, Sleeper, I did want to ask: um, Did you ever anticipate that Caps Edition would get as much kind of traction as it did, as much popularity, or did you kind of just no, do it not for at your all. Own fun? I mean, yeah, I mean, it was great fun making it, but yeah, I never anticipated it. like. I mean, I think it has like a hundred thousand uh, downloads now, or something like that. Wow. I don't know how, how many how many concurrent users it really has and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. It's also kind of weird because now it was a really big part of my life for like a long time, but now it also isn't. So it's kind of in the past too. But I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of unexpected and still kind of surreal because I, I don't know. Like I don't really know what it means. Like <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should update it if people are still using it. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's like your baby. You know, it's grown up and gone out into the world, and you yeah, move yeah. on to your next baby. You know? <laughs> and there's there's people making like it already has a has its own family because people like develop the turtle. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> That's a double dive for Crow That uh, Crow Revel. That is. So Super, super. I don't know if it's greedy is the word, but that's challenging. Get double dive for that. It's definitely two extra a good jump. word. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's about all very calculated. We the problem <laughs> with diving in a nebula is it's low power and it can be punishing. So he's fighting in a ship here with a flak two and a heavy two. Uh, he does have the battery, which helps, but hopefully he'll be able to kill the ship quickly because it can be very punishing. He doesn't have as any engines online right now, so he's. He's going to be here for a minute. Yeah, and he chose to hack engines. Oh, that swipe, I think, was slightly off. But he does have cloaking, so he's going to go when that flak 2 comes in. Okay. 92% dodge. All right, all right. He got he got the dodge in. Calculated, he's, mod he's sure modulating he's his power to handle it. Yeah, Pie Boy. Wow, he is only in Sector Six, and he is basically boss ready. I would say. Uh oh, oh he didn't read moves. the moons. Pie Boy didn't read the moons. He <laughs> oh, no. he didn't read the <laughs> you can moons. see it on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Reading, it's fundamental. <laughs> Good thing we had that five minute delay, so he can't check the stream. You know. <laughs> oh, oh, he, he got it. it correctly. He got it. Wow. 
<laughs> what a lucker. What a luck sack. <laughs> uh, that's great. <laughs> you need to tell Pieboy to take the Freddy's class of learning to read with FTL. You read only this one event, and you just remember the numbers. That's that's all you have to do for that's reading. It. You just got to <laughs> know the one thing. <laughs> uh, that's great. Whew. The double halberd dive for Crow Ravel. Double missile ship for Pie Boy. Crow still about a sector behind though, and these are definitely some of the shorter, uh, short, sorry, longer runs that we've had because uh, we're coming up on an hour, and neither neither person's even close to sector eight yet. So <laughs> definitely gonna be a lower tournament score, I think, for both these players. Double reward for Pie Boy is always nice. All right. What what do you think, Sleeper, of kind of this competitive version of FTL? I know people have talked about, I want a multi multiplayer version of FTL. I hear that all the time on the stream. Do you, do you like this format? What do you think of it? I mean, you have seeds now, right? So that's that's a mm -hmm. big step, I guess. But do you know how, how much the seed actually influences? Like, uh, to which degree it really affects everything? Is it like every event in every sector? or? Yeah, it does. It, it doesn't affect, like, if the enemy shoots at you, where it's going to hit, but, it, like, every jump's the huh. same, you know? Yeah. And does it, if, if, you, if, you take, if you take a jump and get a free BL2, your your opponent will get the huh. same free BL2. And is it, like, Scrap Rewards 2? Um, uh, I not, think so, I'm yeah. not sure. I think so. I, I, I think one of the things we did find out is that dive ships are different. I don't know if that's because maybe people took different paths or if it actually is... Uh, really a truly random dive ship when you get caught but a lot of uh, we have uh, math champ in is one part of the hyperspace dev team has been working a lot figuring out exactly what all is mm. uh, seated because um, we have yeah. learned that when you restart sometimes uh, something might change I believe it was oh, I forget exactly what it was I think maybe a ship will change or a weapon something changes when you restart in the middle of a run so we've had to be careful about that kind of thing I'm, I'm, I'm hearing in my earpiece events are not seated scrap rewards are seated dives are not seated events are not seated in terms of quests spawn different quests spawn at different beacons so that's interesting hmm. but if you have like a surrender offer that'll be the same I do know yeah, oh, and rewards the are the same and then the restart issue has been re been okay okay mm. i mean it would be interesting because i mean i guess you could could just de-randomize it even more like uh, the longer you work on it but it's kind of also mm -hmm. the, the question what would be the goal in this like i like how much do you want to de-randomize because it's random is in some ways is such a big part of the game but then again it also can never be really competitive i, mean, or, or, I don't know like yeah what's the goal really like uh, yeah you're yeah you're i right. think if you had each player taking event and a line it just wouldn't be nearly as fun no. or interesting so i think you need some random ability in it because that is that yeah, is fgl at heart right yeah and there's other games you can race that are always exactly the same well and that's been one of the cool challenges with putting this together is like finding out kind of what our goal is for a competitive tournament like do you want yeah. them to have the exact same choices or if do we want dealing with different choices to be part of the challenge you know no yeah. Have you have you uh, considered like uh, extra races like uh, time based? What's your I, I was trying I was trying to avoid it being completely speed running because there's already speed run world records right, yep, and challenges yep. with that out there, and so that's kind of one of the goals for this tournament was to not have be a complete speed run and not have it be oh. a complete score farm. Find some balance in between to show real skill for the players. You know. No. Now, how did so you arrive at the at the formula to to kind of calculate that? A lot of trial and error. Uh, Kasalian behind the screen at, at Pie Boy actually helped test. We had a lot of players test a lot of different runs and kind of do different calculations to see. Because with the formula, we can either uh, kind of err towards time is the major factor or score is the major factor. And we wanted to kind of have it be kind of 50-50 where they both are equal mm. weight. And so it's a lot of trial and tests and uh, calculation running uh, that we oh. did for that. Yeah, I can see that being a hard part too, because you you determine so much about yeah, well, who performs well by these mm -hmm. calculations or by these rules you set, basically. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. And what's cool is we've seen a lot of different strategies. Like we saw retreat retreat yesterday go very heavy on the score farming, and because um, that's why there are some certain rules in place, like you can't dive more than three times per sector, because we don't want it to oh. become a go back and forth in a, a nebula oh. forever. 
you know. So it's interesting to see the different strategies folks are using. I'm okay, really he does uh, pie boy here as a defense drone. He's looking at nice take. Oh, nice. That's very good. Kind of double up on the missile defense with cloaking plus that. Yeah. Crowvell's got a Lanius bomber to deal with. I like the uh, the repair drone, the whole repair drone. I call it the cheat drone because it's so strong. Cheat drone, yeah. But um, a lot of people don't take that. It is expensive. He doesn't really have that many drones anyway, so it probably wouldn't have been good there. But I was that for sale at the store. Yeah, I like it a lot too. It's it's kind of a security thing, right? Especially yeah, if you get drone just with heavy like, arm. Like 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 if if I were him, I understand not do, the case for not doing it. But if I had the money for it and only one of those two drones, I probably would take the whole repair because I, I'm not expecting with cloaking at this point to eat a lot of missiles. He's got hacking, cloaking. I mean, he's gonna swipe. He's gonna cloak any missiles and swipe the weapons and just take out the ship before he can really take damage. So mm -hmm. the safety blanket and the whole repair drone would be my preference but i i understand the argument of not doing it so crowvel just took fuel he sold fuel for scrap does that go towards your score that kind of event scrap do you know freddy mm. because I, I know there's 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 so many small things that some scrap gains do I, I, I think it i i really don't know my my gut would say yes mm -hmm. because that thinking. is a direct scrap gain as opposed to like a bonus from an augment mm-hmm uh, just like a crew surrender would be a scrap game, but I don't really know. Yeah. it's Even us, the people who are putting on the tournament, are not exactly sure on every little bit of FTL. That's what's so great about FTL. There's so many little things you can still learn after 3,000 hours, 6,000 hours. How many There's hours few, do you have, um, Sleeper? I've been monitoring chat a little bit. We'll call them characters. There's a few characters in chat that would certainly know. <laughs> yeah, probably. Do you have a lot of hours in the game, Sleeper, uh, before you started modding? Mm, no, I had. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's what's a lot. I guess <laughs> compared well, to. Well, I guess it's comparative, not. right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. I definitely like 100% uh, a vanilla pre uh, a, uh, advanced edition, and then I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's interesting talking to a lot of the modders because a lot of like you and both Slowrider talk about pre advanced edition. It's like nobody yeah, ever plays because we are ancient. Edition, but... <laughs> yeah, we are ancient. Like it's like it's so like really like I mean it's, this is really long ago now. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Advanced edition came out what like two years after the main game or something. I don't remember. Pretty, honestly, it's like at least five years or something, isn't it? That long? Wow, I think so. Because I I rage quit. I bought FTL a long long time ago and I rage quit it. <laughs> Like, this right. game's no fun. It's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I discovered yeah. Twitch and learned some things. Yeah. So, so what do you think cool. about uh, Into the Breach, like compared oh. to FTL? I, I enjoyed Into the Breach a lot. I 100% of that when it came out. I, I what I usually talk about on my stream is, I think it's a really well done game, but FTL is so amazing in its infinite replayability that it's hard to kind of replicate that in a game. And Into the Breach is really fun, but I felt like once I played all the combos, I played them all. I didn't need to do any more, you know? No. But I think it's a great game. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I f like, Subset was in a really hard position to actually top what they did. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I mean, they also released in a time where it was, like, in some ways easier to have a big success, but the game is also yeah, so well made, so it's like mm -hmm. a lot of things came together, and then, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder what they what they're doing next. Was Justin here already? Uh, no, we talked to Tom, the writer, um, yeah. but I think we're talking to Justin tomorrow, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe you get uh, get a hint on on what's going on at Substance. <laughs> what do you think? Huh? Uh, I don't know. I every time I've heard about the devs from FTL, it's always like we're never making FTL two. But I don't know if they're still working on games or not. I kind of think they're doing other stuff. Mm. Um, but I don't I know. We'll have to ask him tomorrow. Yeah, because it's been really a long time since since Into the Breach come, came out too now. So I'm not even sure mm -hmm. if they just to plan to do other things. But again, like you know, if you're in it f five years, then you you start to get out. It's like a really high, high turnover rate in, in game development in general. Like yeah. a lot of people don't don't stay for long. Yeah, I, I assume it's like many like like entertainment professions. Like you do it for a while as a side gig and hope it goes well. And if not, well. No. I guess I got to get into something else, you know? <laughs> no. 
All right. Oh, I actually. Was, uh... Oh, sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Go on. Yeah, are you using the the fleet pursuit indicator thing like on, yeah. on the map? That's hilarious. I think that that I made this or at least one version of this. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, did before. you really? You made the fleet yeah. pursuit indicator the first yeah. version of that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think this one. That's like uh, it's like it should be in the game, right? In some way, but it also it's kind of hard to to like integrate it into the the nebula events. Because that's Which different. Flyboy yeah. mm -hmm. just clicked on the Zolt Nine, got the fight. Nice. Okay. I like the bravery. Yeah, we've just actually talked about it. the extended pursuit indicator a lot. Freddy doesn't like it. I like it. That's kind of oh. the reason it's in. Because I yeah. like it. I think it should be in the base game too. I'm with you. <laughs> uh, well, it's. I think it's. Um, I guess I've gotten so good at just trusting my gut, and I'm I'm usually right ninety eight plus percent of the time on the dive. And then I like the little present at the end if I'm wrong, you know, a little Easter egg <laughs> present. The present. Yeah. Surprise, you get a tough ship fight. Surprise. I can see that's more more entertaining, definitely. <laughs> like, yeah, it's more entertaining when you're not 100 percent sure. But the funny thing is about the fleet pursuit is it's, it's not 100 percent accurate anyway. So I found yeah. that there are there are instances where it was like it indicated no dive, and it definitely was a dive. Yeah, I think it's I think it has to be like exactly pixel perfect uh, like over the middle of the of the beacon icon or something like that like we, yeah, we, there we was, got them just in the practice although although to be fair my version of ftl as uh, did have some graphical glitches maybe it just the overlay wasn't quite right mm -hmm. Well, and you're not wrong. I've definitely experienced, I've played with, I've honestly, I've played with extended percent indicator for years. So I'm kind of so used to it, but there are still times when I look at it and I go, well, I'm not mm. sure. Cause like, is it, saying, is it over the middle or not? Yeah. 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 It's like, it's not, it has to be pixel perfect and you don't know what, well, at least I don't know what the pixel pixel perfect is. So, yeah. so there's still a little bit of in unsureness, insecurity and in, in whether it's a dive or not for me sometimes. Pie boy banking so much scrap again. Uh, I think yeah. it's in a half power nebula. Corvell going for the fourth shield. Okay. I don't know where he's going to get the power for that. Just no breathing for a while. Uh, he's almost into sector seven. I think Pie boy is getting close to the end of sector seven, if I'm not mistaken. You foolish humans and your breathing requirements. What is up with <laughs> this? Uh, prepare for venting, humans. Doesn't your doesn't your health just slowly drain in an oxygenless environment? Mine does. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, cool. So, sleeper, you're gonna hang out with us for the rest of the run. That's awesome. I hope you I hope you've been enjoying it. What do you, What do you think of casting an FTL run like this? It's a very different uh, thing, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not used to like public speaking in general, but uh, I, I don't know how you do it. But I guess I mean it's kind of fun, but also I, I feel like I'm I'm too too out of this game <laughs> to to really contribute much. I don't know, I don't know, but I don't know. Crow, I, I, I guess he was super just, used. To it. Yeah, Crow just got a free burst laser too. Had there the money go. immediately, got it online. He's got four shields, cloaking, hacking, monster weapons. If there ever was a chance to kind of catch up. And uh, posed a good store. He's got the ship to do it. Yeah. He still has his but... gumball machine. <laughs> no defense drone for him. Uh, he is well, I will say sleeper. Uh, cloaking dodge here now that he has the volley to get through. It's cool to have a different perspective too, because both of us are players. Me and me and Freddie are players, so it's interesting to get kind of a development side of things. So it's it's always cool to see because I mean we're using hyperspace for this because it gives us more tools, and that's a hmm. lot of times what you're doing is you're creating more tools when you're modding. No. Yeah, I mean, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of one. Of... All right, Pie Boy, going to Sector 8. Okay. Floating 300 now. Yeah, I know. Oh. He's really banging that scrap. I'm, I'm expecting a fourth shield to come in here really soon. There's no more systems he can get, so he might just be waiting till. Oh, Sector 8 store. Maybe, you know, who know? The uh, unicorn oh. pre igniter, as some people will say. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. Not mm. really anything useful there. Wow. He's got a lot of stuff to sell too. Do you like Titanium to sell long range chasing. scanners? Wow. Do you like to sell the scanners in Sector Eight, Freddy? Uh, typically yes, but in the format where you need ship fights and Sector Eight fights are so valuable, probably not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at uh Pie Boy's ship. He's really got a lot of upgrades. Yeah. 
All right, that's what six engine he's going up to. Uh, okay. Looks like at least one force died before the base. Crowravel, honestly though, he's still he's still really strong. He's just a, a sector and a half behind or so. So yeah, he's just a little bit behind. He's got a good ship though. Mm -hmm. You yeah, can he's tell he's not seven. used to. He's, you can tell he's not used to playing fast for sure. <laughs> right. I, I I think he would agree with that. He's not sugar. He's not going to try to sugarcoat that. His, his whole practice, you know, his average runs are like four hours. So his whole practice has been trying to go a little faster. Mm -hmm. Well, he's a very skilled pause player, so it's it's a very different skill set to kind of not pause as much and to go fast. Yeah. You're not trying to min max so much. You're just trying yeah. to go. How long have you been playing no pause, Freddy? Do you know how long you've been doing that? about three years i actually play uh no pause and usually with a speed hack so i only go not only do i not pause but i go faster than faster than the <laughs> game usually lets you go yeah sleeper have you ever messed with the speed hack that ftl uh, <laughs> no has? i didn't know that that existed it's, yeah. it's a it's a program called cheat engine we all oh, right speed up function it's, in external, it. yeah. Yeah. it's a memory memory manipulator huh. oh 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 he oh he sold the oh he's going for the pike. Uh, pike he sold beam. the burst going for the pike. He's going triple beam. Oh well. Okay. Wow, okay. that'll make somebody happy. Got rid of the distraction <laughs> boys. He's keeping the uh repair bot. I like that. He's looking at defense drone. I like defense. I would take drone. the whole repair over defense here because he just doesn't need the defense, but that's okay. I understand. I understand. All it. right. He's going beam meme, man. Beam meme yeah. all the way. Beam me up, Scotty. So for the boss fight, I think you need double halberd pike for it to be a one shot. So this is not a one shot, I don't think, right? No, it's not. Maybe I I don't know the math, but maybe if he incorporated cheeky swipes, it probably would be. You might be right. I don't know cheeky swipe math very well. Very well. But, uh, he'd oh, have to. That's not a sentence I ever thought I'd say. I don't know cheeky swipe math. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a sentence that should ever be repeated, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sleeper, did you, you think ever those, learn those eight drone parts are safe? Do you think it's going to uh, go I mean, uh, th that's a good point. He's pretty low on drone parts. Um, he might need to. Well, I, I would say if he gets one repair station in the final sector, he'll probably be okay. Right. Yeah. Um, but slow, uh, slow. Sleeper, did you ever do things like? Uh, you know, the Sven maneuver and the cheeky swipes and all these crazy strategies people use <laughs> I've, today. I've, I've heard about it theoretically, yeah, but uh, I executed very little of it. It's kind of like, Freddy, like, do you just have, like, uh, training charts for all of this? Or do you, like, exchange this with other players, like, to get the, the optimal swipes for each layout in, in the game? Or, or, yeah, you just learn this by memory, I guess. Or, or Freddy learn it don't over care time. about optimization. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do non-powers, I mean, I guess you kind of... Have to do I it. I mean, really, uh, really, yeah. most ships, it's either usually with a pike, it's either four or five, sometimes six mm -hmm. rooms, depending on the layout. It's you kind of get used to doing that. The whole um, cheeky swipe thing is for those who don't know, it's where you swipe kind of in between rooms and hit more rooms than you normally would be able to. Yeah, I think Crow Ravel actually talked about that when he was uh, when he was a guest, he was talking about you if you get it right pixel perfect between where it's not highlighted apparently you can sometimes the room will be hit twice no oh. yeah. and my boy here getting at at the flagship with a disgusted mm -hmm. look on his face over this hack honestly a dodge it? hack is never good you're almost yeah always gonna tank some damage i mean he'll be able to deal with it just fine yeah but it, I, as long as it's not a weapons hack that's i'm usually like you know what it's not optimal but it's actually not the worst thing ever there's a lot of situations where you'll take a weapons hack over a dodge hack Really? Well, I guess if you have yeah. a different offensive uh, thing going on. I mean, his his defense is so good, it's fine. But mm -hmm. um, if your defense is subpar, you'll take a weapons hack. All right, nice, nice little cloak here. That should be phase one. Ooh, maybe go for some. Yeah, he's yeah, okay, he's... he's thinking about trying for some crew kills. Uh, that's oh, they got it out. out. Okay, okay, go ahead and swipe, finish mm -hmm. it. Set up for those kidnap strats in case you need to run away. Mm -hmm. And damageless boss fight uh, or damageless phase one is always nice. Kind of give you a leg up for the next next phases. Yeah, he is going to be taking phase two at the base, which is what he wants to do. 
All right, Provel still about halfway through sector seven, I think. So still about a sector behind here. Okay. Well, here's a strat most people know. Sleeper, you do the the uh, defense drone bypass with your hacking drones. Is that something you do <laughs> in your play? Yeah, I think I did it a few times. I, I always wonder if they're ever going to patch this out. I don't think they're going to do it, but like it feels like... Yeah. No, the it's not something. Me. It's something they've said that they don't. Want yeah, they to won't do it because they they found it really creative that people came up with it. I think that yeah. something along that line. Yeah. That's Which a good example actually... of something I was talking about earlier, where yeah. you know developers don't know or intend or always know how their game is going to be used. I think that was a really good example. No. Which is one of my beefs with hyperspace. Uh, some of the fixes that they've done is, uh, I I some version of hyperspace. I don't know if the latest one we have we put a fix in for it where. When you depower your hacking drone, it actually explodes. So that's oh, actually one of the yeah, that's things spicy. that they changed. Yeah, yeah. to counter it. <laughs> so I was like, don't take away my hacking bypass. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to have any fun here. Just uh, <laughs> make it punishing as possible, I guess. <laughs> yes, we're all masochists if we play FDL. I'm wondering if Pro Ravel is planning on using that combat too, because uh, it's been in his inventory for a while, or if he just hasn't seen a. It has a been. Store I, he didn't get it for free. I don't know that he's been to a store since he picked it up, though. That might be it, yeah. Oh, he did. Oh, uh, no, he is. He, he's planning on using it. He actually spent the money to get the drone upgrade to use it. Oh, so there he's it using goes. it here. I think he's going to use it to take Zoltan Shields down on, sector, on phase three, which is a good purpose for it. Well, Sleeper, you brought this up earlier. I'm a little concerned about his drone parts if he's planning on using those for offense, honestly. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you have a point that the, the repair stations can give a lot, but it's it's a little bit risky, I find. Yeah. yeah and he, and he has nothing to fall back to, right? He, he sold mm -hmm. everything, so. Yeah, I was wondering if he had a drone arm, but he does not. Mm -mm. All right, he also took the, uh, was that that Zoltan Eye quest there? We're out risking it. Same result. Seeded the seeds the same. They both got a fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Pie Boy in phase three. Let's see how he's going to deal with these borders. He doesn't have the mind control counter. It's definitely take a lot of time to pause and micro here. He's playing this super safe. He doesn't want to make any mistakes. He's only taking one damage on the boss so far, which is really nice. All right, abduction strats. Get boarded twice, run away. Mm -hmm. I like that. Make it safe to clear, clear your ship of those pesky humans. Uh, I'm curious, Sleeper, if you've seen some of the crazy um, like extra races some of the modders lately have created with the uh, things that hyperspace allows you to do. Yeah, it's wild. Like, there's like a plant race and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that one. Yeah. Yeah, you've been try you've been playing uh, the mod, right? Like, yeah. I, I have. I played some multiverse and some yeah. other people who create their own mods. Uh, it's pretty cool to see the different races people come up with. Yeah, and also that the you can give them like custom it. abilities. That's pretty big. Yeah, the plan is bad at putting out fires. FYI, so yes, because <laughs> uh. he also uh, makes more oxygen going. Into he the room. makes his own oxygen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of the modders who's helping us, uh, Math Champ, who's done a lot of the modding for hyperspace, or has joined the hyperspace team, he created a race of flak people that are basically flaks that run around on your ship, and there's a little animation to them running around. <laughs> it's, it's so cool what people are coming up with in the mods these days. <laughs> Do they have an ability? Uh, what, yes. What's the uh, I think it's called, like, flak you or something, and, like, it'll do damage to everybody in the room. <laughs> uh it's it's uh, he has a couple different ones he has like flak wizards and stuff he's super <laughs> fun and creative some of these these uh, things they've come up with all right pie boy coming up on yeah it looks like he's got it in the bag uh... mm -hmm. only uh he took a couple oh. missile hits there still looking good though three drawn parts <laughs> yeah crow he's... um <laughs> I'm hoping you get at least two repair stations, because if not, that's that's sketchy. All right, nice little extra NG. Now they're actually throwing away crew now. Okay, what time are we looking at? We're over the hour 15 mark right now. Those repairs are far away for Crow, so 
if he finds the store that Pie Boy went to, I think he should invest on buying some drone in buying some drone parts right now. Mm. All right, good hits for Pie Boy. You have three drone parts, sir. Click the drone parts. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You're doing the thing I do. Click it. Right I do. Click it. Click it. You're 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 influencing me, Freddie. <laughs> that's that's not good news for you. There it is, Pie Boy. One seventeen, an hour and seventeen. Okay, strong run. He's gonna have a good score. I, I kind of can see his face off to the side. He's probably a little disappointed in his speed, but yeah. I mean, if he knew what was going on, he'd be pleased. Yeah, it was a good run. Yeah, it was a clean boss fight, and anytime you have a clean boss fight, that feels good to me. Yeah, it was a very clean run. Um, good boss fight. Well executed run. Mm -hmm. Strong ship. It should be a good score. I just know he's. That's how most of the runners are. You yeah, know? They're all these players like I could have never better. good enough. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Crow is taking an extra long route here. He went down and around to get those repair stations and extra ship fights. I think he knows he needs to maximize his gains here. Yeah, I, I, Sector 8's the time to do it. That's where you really want to take as many fights as possible. He also has a strong ship with a lot of upgrades. Yeah. He will post beams. a good score. He, he might actually get a pretty... Even though he doesn't one-shot the boss, with this triple beam setup, it's only going to be two swipes, I think, each phase, and they can't dodge for the Zoltan Shield phase, so he could have a pretty fast boss fight. Mm-hmm. All right. 59.83 for Pie Boy. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. for pie boy it's a clean boss fight pro Real does have to do a couple dives here i'm gonna guess he's gonna go for some kills to get some more score farming here we did not limit the amount of times they can dive in sector eight because that's innately lim limited by uh see good the, example uh, here for crow maneuver. um did not so this is a dive ship if he had done cheeky swipe Sort of in, in with these with the setup, he would have had two. He would have had exactly four extra damage. Okay, and it would have been a one shot. Hmm. Okay, but he would have had to have gotten it all off correctly. It's not easy to do. I, I kind of wonder. I guess it's worth doing. I don't know. Yeah, because extra time it takes to get that pixel perfect. You know. Yeah, it wipe. takes a lot of extra time to set it up. So it's like, mm -hmm. unless you're just really good at it. That's one reason, I actually value beams slightly lower and no pause because of the extra micro requirement often mm. that can cost you yeah you know? i can imagine that this is super hard if you have to time it with shields and stuff like that because mm -hmm. every every extra beam that you have to try to aim quickly during a hack is micro no. not going into you know dealing with borders or aiming your laser or something good swipe and honestly crowvel is not as far behind as i thought he's caught up some he did. he did. He did catch up quite a bit, didn't he? I was thinking the mm -hmm. same thing, where he was mm -hmm. like a sector, almost a sector and a half behind. He was over mm -hmm. a sector behind, and then now he's pretty close to catching up here. Yeah, only about three minutes behind. So if he gets this boss fight in just a couple minutes, he's. I think he might have a chance, because he's taken some extra ship fights, some extra dives. I actually think he might might have a chance score-wise to catch catch Pie Boy. His, his um, hack is fine here. It's not ideal but i don't wouldn't want to leave and risk a worse hack so mm. i would take that hack it's, he is yeah, going the for the cheeky hack. swipe here it comes see if it... oh let's see it yeah let's see Takes extra time there it comes there it is i uh, decided to not do i, oh, I think dude. he had it set up correctly yeah this is not going to be a one shot but it's oh, Ooh, oh almost <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like a as they split that's like a boot in your butt. A foot I with know. a boot. So As they say in all like, those card ouch. games, one off lethal, <laughs> man. He's the combat one off two going off. <laughs> to, like, please let me get one more damage like, in. I will finish you. You can do it with the halberd plus the uh, combat. Oh. I guess it doesn't have the power, apparently. Again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know. This, this might be... I don't know if he has the time before the cloak comes up, though. I know. Oh, he does. Good. Uh, okay. Look at his face. He's like, yeah, it's, it's like he ate a sour grape or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like those babies that eat their sour, first sour experience. <laughs> you ever watch those videos? 
I, I have. Uh, are, are, are Freddy, are you the mean guy who feeds them those sour grapes? Here, I'm going to feed your kid this sour grape to see his face. <laughs> I would if I were around enough children who hadn't had sour grapes yet. <laughs> Now smile right. into the camera. Sometimes I, in the news I've seen recently where like the famous kids that are living, grew up in meme world, um, they do interviews, you know, 14 years later because they, they go from children to being adults into mm -hmm. college or whatever. And they ask them about their experience growing up as a meme child. <laughs> And they say, I hate my parents, is what they say. Yeah, no, no, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty normal. Most, but like, they, I saw one where they interviewed Yes Kid, if you remember him. Yes, the one that looks like he was eating, he was eating sand, I think, but he became the Yes Kid. Yeah, he's the Yes Kid. Uh, <laughs> all right, Let's see how he deals with the borders. Neither, neither player chose to get mind control counter, so, but they do have pretty good crew to deal with these borders. Good mind control. Just a guy on doors. Oh, that's a pretty lucky mind control for him. Oh, all right. He's oh. doing that strategy with the shields down to give him more time for the cloaking. I like it. Yeah, we haven't seen that. Oh, no. I guess Hollow did this. Mm -hmm. I, I think Hollow was the only other one. And mm -hmm. he does it with no pause, which is even more impressive. More pausing very little. Okay, we're coming up on final kill here. Oh, the cloaking didn't quite last, though. Yeah, it, the cloaking does. It's RNG based. It's, you know, sometimes it lasts long enough, sometimes it doesn't. And he's get, he's one short now of the crew mm -hmm. kill. Another just slightly, or not crew kill, but ship kill. Just mm -hmm. he's getting that combat two employed again. Yeah. Oh, he missed time the halberd beam when the shields came back up. He's kicking himself for that. It just shows how bad the combat two is for you. It's just not a great. There it is. There okay. it goes. Getting the, one, getting the combat two kill. 2350. So basically 124 we're rounding up, I believe, for the rounding up or down after the 30 seconds. So 124. Pretty darn good run, though. Again, slower, but I think he had more ship fights. So I, I honestly, once we see a score, I'm curious to see how close this is going to be. Yeah, I'm afraid to call it right now just yet. Mm -hmm. Wow. 70 60. Oh wow. no. That's only the second uh, over oh, 7k no. run. Oh no, it's going to happen again. Okay. <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know. I don't know how the math's going to work out on this one, but it is I don't know. Be that's close. that's over that's over 1k higher. <laughs> yeah, I oh, that's pretty good for Crow. That is pretty good. That's I'm good impressed. news for him. That's that's a really good run. Um well, Sleeper, I I it's been a pleasure having you as a guest. I hope you had a good time uh, casting with us. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Oh. Um, I'll, I'll give a reminder to everyone. If you uh, in chat type exclamation point guest list, you can look up information for where you can find Sleeper Service, see what he's working on. And again, if you want to just remind us the like uh, the projects you've done before, your your game and what you're working on now, just as a final uh, farewell for our, for our viewers. Uh, yeah, you can find Hyperspace Dogfights on Steam and on HIO. And uh, I think it's also like 25% off right now. And nice. there's also, yeah, I made some uh, smaller uh, free games too that you can find on itch for like game gems and stuff. If you want to check that out, you're welcome. Awesome. Well, thanks again for Captain's Edition and all the punishment over the years you've given. All <laughs> you're, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We will uh, talk to you soon. And again, appreciate you. And we are going to come back with an interview with the players and our score reveal, which is Should up in the air right now. It Can't will. wait to see this one. Should be interesting. We'll be back in just a sec, my friends.
All righty, my friends. We are back with our players who had a great run, and we don't know the winner yet. So I'm super excited to find out. Freddie, what did you think of that run? Kind of two different, one fast, one high score. That was an exciting run, and I don't know. I'm I'm sort of clinching and wondering who's going to win because I really have no idea. Well, Pie Boy, we were watching you. You were kind of ahead in, you were about a sector to a sector and a half ahead for a lot of the second part of that run. And then you were really kind of taking it careful, I feel like, on the boss fight. Were you trying to make sure you didn't make any mistakes on that final boss fight? Yeah. So thinking about my previous games in on and off stream, sector seven and eight are where I make some really silly mistakes. So I just remembered that middle mouse button is pause, so I used it. <laughs> uh and it probably saved me a little bit of hassle. And uh, personally, I'm already uncomfortable playing with what seems to be, to me, really fast. So Ooh, I just hope it does enough because I've got the idea that Crow has a higher game score than me. You are correct. <laughs> <laughs> but you do have a faster time, so that's why we're not sure yet. And we will re reveal in a second. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about this is because of my minor crying about like will this will this formula emphasize time too much? I can take winning or losing here like um quite happily. Well you got the thick skin and we will reveal it in just a second, but before we do, I gotta talk to Crow because you had a really good run with we we saw you trying to do some cheeky swipes. You were taking your time in some yeah, of these. Runs, right? so yeah, so like it just wasn't happening. Um like I know it like the I was doing it better in practice. I don't know if it's just like my resolution was a little bit too small in the game and like trying to get that one pixel in just was like not happening and I kept trying it and like after it didn't happen four or five times, I was like, all right, I just gotta <laughs> kind of throw that out, which screwed up the uh, one shot build. And uh, like, there are like so many fights I would have won like 17, 18, 20 seconds faster uh, with just doing that. Uh, then, like, the only fight I really remember that was super annoying was the uh, the weapon hack missile with double fires. Uh, that was that was fun. <laughs> yeah, you're well, just Freddy, not you quite cheeky enough, sir. You just got need a little more cheekiness and uh, <laughs> yeah, you're you're swiping. a lot of one one shots there. Well, I'm curious. Um, we talked about this just just a little bit, but double pike beam halberd was your build, right? Yeah. Is does it that requires a cheeky swipe to be a one shot on the boss, right? Uh, so what? Pike beam is six and six, so that's uh, twelve. So yeah, because you need the halberd to do the ten. Yeah, yeah we kind of saw your you. Phase, your phase yeah. one was you let there was four health remaining. Yeah, I think I was like, one. and yeah. if, if you, it, in the cheeky swipe, because you would have gotten. Two extra Two damage and plus one, plus one. It would have been exactly enough if it all lined up. But it's tough yeah. to do, and I, I don't know if it. I was as during the run, I was saying I don't know if it's worth. So, I mean, so like the fact that it deals like the double damage and it's more damage in general. If it's saving you like one volley, particularly if you're going one shot build, because then I actually it's not even waiting for the weapons to charge. I'm waiting for the cloaking to come off cooldown and then hack mm -hmm. again. So, like I said, that's. That could be like 20, 30 seconds like per fight that you just kind of lose out on. Yeah. Well, I think we built the suspense enough, so <laughs> I'm sure you're both dying to know. Let's show Pie Boy's score first, which I have his time at, uh, I believe it's an hour 17, and the score is 59.83, which is pretty darn good score, honestly. So let's check out what Pie Boy's tournament score is. So that's a 197.36, so just under 200. So Crow had a slower run at 124, an hour 24. So about, what is that? Like seven minutes slower. But he's looking at a score of 70-60. So you broke 7K. So I'm thinking that might do it. Let's see what his tournament score is. Drum roll. 225-25. Congratulations, Crow. That's a really nice. high score. It's only a second over 7K score we saw. Yeah, well, I was trying to channel my inner retreat retreat. What can I say? <laughs> well, you took a lot of extra dives, I noticed, like in a couple of nebulas. You like dove twice to get as much as you could out of that sector. Was that? Oh, that yeah, was... yeah. That that and was like were... my secret tech is like, okay, I got three dives. So <laughs> if it's there and my weapons are going to carry it, then go for it. That's a gamble. It's definitely a gamble. Did you feel strong enough in your build to do that? 
Um, yeah, I mean, at the time, I mean, like I said, I, I thought about it for a little moment, and I was just like, yeah, I mean, it, it should pretty much, you know, destroy the ship and go for it. I mean, I was a little bit concerned about, like, how power management was, because it's like, you're just not even focused on, like, how much power you actually have. It's just like, all right, I'll buy some reactor at some point and hope that, you know, it's enough when I get there. Well, congratulations. That was our second highest FTL score, and I think you're in the top four or five of uh, the winning runs. Pybo, you had a really good run. Did you feel good about your run? That was a solid run. I agree. I was thinking your, your weapon build was looking pretty darn good. Well, um, we are going to have, I think, I think, Piper, are you going to join us for um, some, uh, as a guest eventually? I believe that's right, right? Day three, yep. you're going to join us. So we'll get to chat with you more uh, tomorrow, I believe. But again, congratulations to Crow Ravel. I hope you feel good and are ready for your next round now. Yep. I <laughs> hope so, too. Honestly, <laughs> I hope so, too. Crow, I wish you the best of luck. Oh, thank you. Uh, and, you know, good luck in your future FTL ventures. And thanks for being a part of this. Well, GG to both of you. You guys did a great job. We'll uh, we'll definitely get to talk with more of you uh, more in the future. Our next uh, run after this break is actually going to be our first quarterfinal run. And that's going to be between Retreat, Retreat, and Farb. And I'm going to ask Kasalian, is there anything I need to remind us about for during the break here? Okay, we're going to have another content creator video from Irie, so check out that uh, to kind of learn more about the uh, people involved in the Irie side. And again, big thank you to Irie and the uh, uh, the charity, um, uh, Eleonoran Foundation. We appreciate anybody who's, uh, who's donated already, and we'll definitely keep people updated as we get more donations. But we're going to take a break to get set up for the next match, and when we come back, we will see uh, Farb versus Retreat Retreat. So y'all stick around. We'll be back soon.